Look, I know I said my next video would be my cry of fear review, but it's quickly becoming the longest video I've ever done, so it's going to take some time. Plus, it's been over a month since my last video and I felt bad about that, so here we are. Oh, g'day mate, how you going? How's the missus and the kids? Oh, did you bloody catch the Sharkies game last night? What the fuck were they thinking? I could play better than most of those dickheads. Knife. That's a knife. What's going on? I'm just waiting for a mate. Things like putting bodies in barrels and and then hiding the barrels away. Let it go, dogs. Let's go. So where the bloody hell are you? <coughs> oh, whoa. I don't. I don't know what happened there, huh? Well, hey guys, welcome back to yet another Sunderland video. Hope you're doing well. As you know, I'm from Australia. Well, some of you know that. One guy thought I was Irish, so I just wanted to make sure you're on top of what my accent is. Australia is a pretty great country if you don't think about it for more than five seconds, and we make some pretty good movies. And I don't know if this is some sort of patriotic act or I've just run out of ideas, but I want to make a video that sheds light on a couple of Australian horror movies I think you should watch. Plus, as most of my viewers are from the United States, I thought it could be a fun way for you Yanks to learn about my culture, and there is no better way to do that than to watch horror movies. These aren't in any order or anything like that, I'll just be giving a very brief plot synopsis for each film to avoid possible spoilers. Before we get started, a quick bit of housework. I have a Discord where heaps of cool horror nerds hang out and talk shit. If you're into that, you should join. I also have a Patreon. If you want to support the channel for just $1, you can do so, and you'll get extra stuff for your contribution. Links to both are in the description. With all of that out of the way, Let's go to the land down under and get scared. Six years after the violent death of her husband, Amelia is at a loss. She struggles to discipline her out-of-control six-year-old son Samuel, who she finds impossible to love. Samuel's dreams are plagued by a monster he believes is coming to kill them both. When a disturbing storybook called the Babadook turns up at their house, Samuel is convinced that the Babadook is the creature he's been dreaming about. As his hallucinations spiral out of control, he becomes more unpredictable and violent. Amelia, genuinely frightened by her son's behaviour, is forced to medicate him. But when Amelia begins to see glimpses of a sinister presence all around her, it slowly dawns on her that the things Samuel has been warning her about may be real. The Babadook was written by, and is the directorial debut, of Jennifer Kent, who based the film off her 2005 short film called Monster. It was shot in Adelaide, South Australia, and released in 2014. The Babadook was not a commercial success here in Australia, even though it got rave reviews from critics. That is because there is a stigma in Australia. Most Australians think our movies suck, so no one wants to go watch them. Thankfully, it managed to get butts in seats overseas, and grossed $103 million from a budget of only $2 million. I remember the hype surrounding the Bubbledook when it was released on Blu-ray and I was so excited to finally check it out. This was the first horror movie that I can remember where that annoying conversation started on film sites and Twitter, where people refused to classify it as a horror film because the genre has a stigma of either being brainless or excessively violent. It seemed the general public and critics refused to accept that horror can be more than their preconceived notions, and the Bubbledook is a clear example which proved them wrong. What the Bubbledook brings to the table is an expertly crafted story where the real monster isn't the creature you see in all the trailers or on the cover of the movie, but how grief can linger and fester in a person, and cause them to resent something they should love because it reminds them of what was taken away. It has a foreboding atmosphere that is accentuated not by the Babadook itself, but the tension created by the complex and deteriorating relationship between Amelia and Samuel. When the Babadook comes into the picture, it isn't simply another horror creature acting as an antagonist who is designed to scare the main characters. Instead, where the film truly excels is how it uses the Babadook as a catalyst and a force that brings the hidden feelings and emotions of the characters to a boiling point, and in order for them to survive, they must confront them. I just didn't want you to let it in! I'll make sure nothing gets in tonight. 
If you watch the trailers for the film, you won't be shown any of that. Instead, they focus on the Babadook being a monster, which is not how he is represented in the film. If you like horror films that tackle dark human emotions while also providing a foreboding atmosphere, you should check out the Babadook. And if you saw the trailers and dismissed it because it looked like every other monster movie with jump scares, I urge you to give it a chance. I promise you won't regret it, but don't hold me to that because I don't know you. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. Six months ago, Brent Mitchell was driving when he thought he saw something on the road. He swerved and tragically lost his father in the accident. Blaming himself, he is grieving as best he can in his sleepy quintessential Australian rural town when Lola Stone asks him to the prom. Brent says no and now he's screwed. Because unfortunately for Brent, when Lola doesn't get what she wants, she and Daddy throw a prom of their own. She is going to be prom queen and Brent will be the king, whether he likes it or not. The loved ones is what happens when puppy love goes horribly, violently, terribly terribly wrong. Brent should have said yes. Uh, is it finger licking good? The reason Brent really, really should have said yes is because The Loved Ones is a movie with a fair bit of torture. <laughs> but not the over-the-top torture porn found in shit like Hostel and the later Saw movies. It also has a dark comedy twist that makes it so damn good and balances out the intense horror scenes. It was filmed in Melbourne, Victoria on a budget of $4 million and was released on November 4th, 2010. It was the first feature film for short filmmaker Sean Byrne, who has directed one other film called The Devil's Candy in 2015. The Loved Ones was originally going to receive an R18 rating in Australia because it was so brutal, but the rating was appealed on the basis is that the comedy aspects of the film mitigated both the sadistic aspect and the impact of the violence. The ratings board agreed and they lowered it to MA15+. Like most Australian films, it did fucking poorly at the box office and only made $358,399. But the critics thought it was really good and The Loved Ones is ranked 37 on Rotten Tomatoes top 100 movies list. I don't know if that means much to you though. Whoa. The Loved Ones captures everything that was great about Ausploitation films of the 70s and 80s, but refines those influences for a modern audience. Most of the film takes place in one location, the home of Lola Stone, and mainly in the dining room. But The Loved Ones excels in how it manages to keep the viewer on the edge of their seat, achieved through the fucking amazing directing and the performances of the actors, especially Robin McLeavy, who plays Lola. She is one of my favourite horror movie villains. Lola is truly sadistic, but somewhat sympathetic. The actor who plays Brent and Lola's father also give a stellar performance, but Lola steals the show. Lola and her father are two of the most despicable, vile, and downright disgusting people to ever grace the screen, but I can't help but love them in a really fucked up way. This film embodies everything that I love about Australian cinema. The setting reminds me of the town I grew up in, so it really brings home a sense of nostalgia and an extra layer of fear. The themes that are being explored are realistic and relatable, things all of us can connect with on some level, and the characters are all perfectly written and acted. It is brutal, sporadic, intense, relentless, nail-biting, and cathartic, but also uses those elements to not just shock the viewer, but to tell an interestingly dark and engaging story, with the many moments that will make you laugh as well. It does all of this while exploring themes of loss, grief, young love, and sexuality, self-harm, and guilt. The fact the loved ones manages to pull all of that off without screwing up the tone should be applauded. This movie is basically the dinner scene from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it goes for 84 minutes with a hint of Evil Dead too. That is all you need to know really. Watch it. A journalist named Natasha and her crew are hunting leads for a story regarding dodgy going-ons conducted by the New South Wales government. The state is in the middle of severe droughts and water shortages, which isn't anything new for Australia, and the government has unveiled new plans to recycle millions of litres of water trapped in a network of abandoned train tunnels below Sydney. Out of nowhere, the government doesn't move forward with their plans and won't tell the public why they've been shelved. The journalists begin to investigate why the plan has been abandoned and come across rumours that homeless people who use the tunnel for shelter have gone missing and the government is trying to cover it up. The crew decide that in order to find out what is really going on, they need to explore the tunnels and record anything they find. But as Natasha and her crew hunt for the story in the dark, never-ending tunnels, it quickly becomes clear that something is in there with them, stalking them, hunting them.
The Tunnel is a found footage documentary style film released in 2011. The people involved in the film used crowdfunding to get the money they needed for the movie and managed to raise $135,000. That fundraising achievement is pretty good for a horror movie made by a first time director named Carlo Ledmesa. Sorry if I butchered that by the way Carlo if you're watching. But overall that budget is ridiculously low. Fuck me though, they worked with what they had and made an awesome found footage horror film. The Tunnel was mostly shot in, well, the tunnels under Sydney. So all the shit you're going to see in this film is legit. It makes the movie feel more real because it was filmed in the actual tunnels. Amazingly, on top of the shoestring budget, the tunnel was shot in just 14 days. It was also the first Australian film to be distributed and promoted legally through the torrent site BitTorrent, which I think is really cool and innovative. But again, the tunnel made fuck all in the box office, with one source stating it only made $1,532. Even the reviewers praised the film. Considering the tunnel was uploaded to a torrent site, I doubt anyone involved cared about the money too much and just wanted people to see the cool horror movie they'd made. And honestly, that's something I severely fuck with. That's... That's when, uh... That's when I heard it. The tunnel takes its tiny budget and proves you don't need millions of dollars to create an engaging and creepy horror movie. Horror films in claustrophobic locations are also some of my favourites, like The Descent, not The Descent 2, and As Above So Below. Anyway, the tunnel emulates the feeling of claustrophobia like in the movies I just mentioned. The train tunnels under Sydney are extremely long, dark and twisting. Most of the tunnels actually takes place in an underground network connected to the railway tunnels, which are just as dark, long and twisting. This spices up the locations without sacrificing the claustrophobic feeling of the film. The team is being pursued by a tall, fucked up looking monster, which would be so much more terrifying if you were also trapped in a bloody dark maze. It's a very spooky and dangerous place for our little journos to explore. Speaking of the journos, the actors who play them do a great job, especially when they are being interviewed for the news report. They speak and act exactly like TV journalists in Australia. Their banter outside of that is also very believable, and as someone who was a journalist, they act just like every journo I have met. I really enjoy the cast, and the big reason why is that the the film takes its time to establish who the characters are, what drives them, and you get a great look at their personalities and how they interact with each other. It lets you get to know them, so once all the scary and monster shit starts to happen, you are rooting for them to get out of the tunnels. And if you enjoy movies such as The Descent or As Above So Below, I highly recommend you check out The Tunnel. It evokes the same vibe as those more well-known movies, but also stands up on its own. If you don't like those films, I still think you should give The Tunnel a chance, because I think it's that good. That statement is basically what this whole video boils down to, I don't care. Watch these movies. This isn't good. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. I know you were expecting a plot synopsis and some funny stuff about the film's background, but that just ain't happening with Lake Mungo. None of the clever stuff you've just watched would be present here. Instead, I want you to go into this movie completely blind, just like I did. I honestly believe that this is the best way to watch Lake Mungo, because whatever you see about this movie, whatever I could describe, would not accurately depict the story this movie tells and how fucking goddamn well it tells it. Rarely does a movie make me feel the way Lake Mungo did. Once the credits rolled, I had nothing to say and didn't know how to feel while I try to process what I had just experienced. It's a harrowing tale of loss, heartache and regret. It's filmed from the perspective of a news report, so it's technically found footage, but don't let that dissuade you. It's one of those rare films that uses found footage to its advantage. All of the casts are utterly fantastic, and many people I have talked to believe this story was true, purely based on how believable and realistic the actors were. I know I said I wouldn't go into the plot, but I'll leave you with the question at the core of Lake Mungo, which I hope will sell you on the film. How well do you really really know a person you love. Seriously, all of the films I have listed in this video deserve a watch. I wouldn't have included them if I thought they weren't worth your time. But if for some odd reason you only see one movie this year featured on this list, make it Lake Mungo. Are there any memories from that night that stand out for you? Uh, I remember we had the porch light on. Still two actually, just in case. And why is that? Just in case she comes home, I guess. <laughs>
With that cryptic review, we've come to the end of this little video about Australian horror films you should absolutely watch. If you've seen these movies, let me know what you think of them in the comments. But please be wary of spoilers, because I don't want any of these movies to be ruined for those who haven't seen them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. Liking, commenting and subscribing really helps the channel grow and get into the recommended feed of other horror nerds, because the YouTube algorithm is a cruel and faceless god that demands a sacrifice. As I mentioned at the top of this video, I have a Discord where horror fans can and have gathered and we have a damn fun time and if you want to support the channel further you can head over to my patreon and contribute that way links to both my discord and patreon are in the description a massive thank you to all my patrons displayed on screen and another massive thank you to all of my subscribers and viewers for supporting the channel i am still blown away by all of the support and i appreciate every single one of you much love and i will see you in the next video which is definitely going to be my cry of fear review unless it kills me of course ciao